<laughs> crazy is better than creepy creepy. You agree with that? I'll agree with that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is awkwardly fantastic. Piece wants to find functions. Now, here's what you need to understand. We're going to graph this guy right here, and I'm going to graph this guy. But I don't want to graph the whole thing. I only want to graph this guy right here up to where x equals 1. Are you with me? Now, here's what would be good for you guys to do. Go ahead and make a line of demarcation when x is 1. That means I should have a vertical line here to help me out here when x equals 1. Now notice, you want to be x plus 3, but you only want to be this where? where okay, where are x's less than 1? On the left side. So I'm going to actually do this in pencil, so maybe it's kind of tough to see it first, but then I'm going to go back and darken it in. So, how do you graph x plus 3? Isn't that the same thing as saying y equals x plus 3? So what's your slope? <coughs> what's your y-intercept? So let's say I'm up here at 0, 3. A slope of 1. So this is my line. Now, if I sketch this out, I have this guy. Now, typically, I would keep on graphing this whole guy, but I'm not going to because I gave a restriction, right? I said before for this guy, let me do this. I want x to be less than 1, which means I want to keep the stuff this where? On the left side of that line of demarcation. But we got to be careful because at this point right here, we have to do an open circle. Right, just like you said, it's not equal to. So let me go back over this with my marker. <coughs> so that's how I would graph that. It's less than but not equal to 1. So my piecewise defined function looks like this line as long as your x values are less than 1. Well, let's look at the other part. The other part basically says this. y equals negative 1 half x plus 1. And the condition here, x's are greater than or equal to 2. So where do I make my cut line? Right, my line of demarcation is going to be right here, too. <coughs> if I were to graph this, what do I know about it? It is linear with a slope of negative one half. Y intercept is what? Zero one. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. What? <coughs> When it cross, when it hits this orange line of demarcation, it will be closed. Mm -hmm. But first, 0, 1. So my y-intercept is right here. Down 1 over 2, and so on. So when I graph this, let me get the right angle here. Now, why are we using the y-axis instead of the... Because this y-intercept is the y-axis. This order pair 0, 1 is, if I, if I didn't even have this condition here, if I didn't have that at all, and I said graph that, where is it located? It goes through 0, oh, okay, 1. Never mind, I got you. Got you, got you, got you, got you. Do I want this whole guy? No, I'm cutting it off right here, right? So let me erase this.
But at this point right here, I get to include it. Now, why do I get to include this one, but I didn't the other one? Because the conditional statement here said, or equal to. Okay. So, closed circle. <coughs> and I got my graph going out there. We did this in 0310, yeah. What do you guys think? No? This is. So, can you scoot over so I can see the last part of the equation? So, what about space in the middle between 1 and 2? It's a very good question. What's there? That's why I asked you. You tell me what you see there. Space. <laughs> space. <coughs> That's right, there's nothing in between negative 1 and 2. And, you know, I'm kind of glad that you mentioned that because I want to talk negative. about. Did I say negative one? Yeah. I don't know why I'm stuck on negatives. That's my personality. <coughs> <laughs> what is your domain for this guy? Uh, negative infinity to uh, parenthesis one. Negative infinity to one, close parentheses, union with union what? Union with uh, bracket two, positive infinity. Two to infinity. Do you all agree? Yeah. What is your range? Bottom to top. Negative. It's coming from negative infinity. This guy goes all the way up to 4. This guy, do I need to include this guy? Notice that when you smash all of this onto the y-axis like we had done before for finding domain and range, anything that's on the blue line for the y-coordinates, it's also included on that orange line. So it goes all the way up to 4, parentheses, and I'm done. Is that okay with domain and range? So I want to ask you some questions about this function. It is a function, right? Which means I can do what with the function? Do you know? Vertical. It does it pass the vertical line test, Doug? If I draw a vertical line, does it pass? Everywhere it passes. Okay. But something else I can do is that I can ask you to evaluate. But even though, what if it doesn't cross the line? The vertical you line. You look right here. The vertical line test says that every vertical line crosses through at most one point. Most one, okay. Sure. If I ask you to evaluate f of negative 5, I'm asking you to evaluate a function. How many answers am I supposed to get? One. One. So plug in negative 5 into which piece? Who will accept negative 5? It's less than one, right? So, is x less than one? Yes. Yes. So plug it in here. Plug in negative five. What do you get? Negative two. I get negative two. And notice, if you look at the picture, negative five, negative two is right here. So it shows up. If I ask you to evaluate f of f of 10. Who will accept a value of 10? Is 10 less than 1? No. Is 10 less than, or is 10 greater than or equal to 2? So I plug in 10. What do you get? You'll see that I get negative 4. Does that match up with my picture? If I go all the way out here to 10, do you think I'll be at negative 4? Yeah, it looks about right. <coughs> That's pretty accurate. What is f of 1? No solution. I'm not asking you to solve. I'm asking you to evaluate. No evaluation. <laughs> is 1 less than 1? So it doesn't go in there. Is 1 greater than or equal to 2? So it doesn't go here. What this tells me is that my function is, it's undefined for that value of x. It's undefined. 